Hi, welcome to our video on nuclear transformations. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about what happens when uh, the nucleus of an atom emits radiation. This nuclear radiation um, normally causes what is called a nuclear transmutation, that is the changing of the structure of the nucleus. So it either becomes a different isotope or it becomes a different uh, element altogether. Right? And that's because when uh, there is radioactivity being emitted from the nucleus of an atom, normally that radioactivity is in the form of particles. Those particles are actually taking chunks, parts of the nucleus, and emitting them, throwing them out. And so, therefore, the remaining nucleus is going to be different. And that's what gives us this uh, transformation of the nucleus, or the fancy word, transmutation. All right, we're going to be looking at five different types of um, nuclear reactions or nuclear decays: alpha, beta, gamma, neutron emission, and electron captures. All right, the first three are emissions or decays. All right, uh, the only type of these ones that will not change the nucleus will be the gamma emission, since uh, gamma are electromagnetic radiation, and therefore they don't carry parts of the nucleus out. Um, before we actually uh, get started, I want to remind you of a couple of little things that are important so we can actually uh, do this work, okay? So, first of all, I want to remind you of how we use the symbol of an element, um, all right? So, the first part is that we, in fact, uh, have the symbol X, and on the top left corner, we're going to write the mass number. The mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons that we have in that nucleus, in that atom. On the bottom uh, left-hand corner, we're going to write Z, which is the atomic number. All right. So the atomic number is going to be very useful um, because it gives us the number of protons. All right. So we don't tend to write the charge because in the nucleus when you're looking at the nuclear charge, not the atom, but the nuclear charge, the nuclear charge is determined by the number of protons. So that's already stated. So we don't have to restate that. All right? So if we wanted to write uh, about the nucleus of an atom of sodium-23, we could go to the periodic table and find that the atomic number of sodium is 11, and we write 23 as the mass number, and Na, of course, as its symbol. Similarly, we would do for an atom of uranium or a nucleus of uranium-235, 235, 235 in the mass number position, 92 from the periodic table for uranium, and of course, our symbol. Once we know how to write our symbols, we also need to learn what are the symbols for the different types of radiation, radiation that is being emitted. So, in the case of alpha particles, alpha particles are the nuclei of atoms of helium-4. And so we can write it in two different ways. We can write the symbol for helium, or we can write the symbol for alpha. They're exactly the same. But we're going to put 4 for the mass number in each case, and 2, which is the number of protons in a helium nucleus. All right? So from that, we know that an alpha particle is composed of two protons and two neutrons, because 2 plus 2 adds to 4, which is the mass number. Beta particles, instead, are electrons that are being emitted by the nucleus and so again we can use the symbol small lowercase uh, e or beta to represent the beta particle and on the top since there are no protons or neutrons we're gonna put zero that would be the mass number and on the bottom we're gonna put this remarkable negative one and we put a negative one because if an electron were to come into the nucleus it would cancel out a proton and so we're going to use that as the expression, All right? Gamma rays are a little bit different because gamma rays are electromagnetic radiation and therefore have neither protons nor neutrons. They actually have no mass. They're just energy. And so we're just going to write this symbol for gamma and a zero in the number of mass number and zero again for the number of protons or atomic number. That means that they will not affect the nucleus itself. Finally, Neutrons are symbolized by a 1 and a 0 with a lowercase n. 
zero because uh, down here because there are no protons and what we put in the lower left corner is the number of protons or atomic number so it would be zero and yet we put a one on top because the mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons so we have one neutron we would put one there All right the final thing that we need to know uh, or remember is that there is such a thing as a principle of conservation of nucleons and I'll get back to the last bit in just a moment All right the principle of conservation of nucleons that means that the number of nucleons at the beginning of the reaction must equal the number of nucleons at the end of the reaction all right that's very important so the number of protons must remain constant throughout the reaction the number of neutrons must remain constant throughout the reaction uh, so we're going to be looking at how that happens all right so let's go ahead and go directly into the first type of decay and we're going to be looking at alpha decay alpha decay is when an alpha particle is emitted by the nucleus of an atom. In this particular case, I have symbolized the atom by the capital letter E for just element. All right? It has a particular atomic, uh, sorry, mass number A and an atomic number Z. When we emit an alpha particle, in this case I wrote it as a uh, nucleus of helium, we know that there's going to be four mass numbers that are being emitted and two protons that are being emitted. So our resulting element X is going to be the original mass number minus 4 and the original atomic number minus 2. So how does that really look? Well, let's see. If we have, for example, radon, uh, sorry, if we have radium uh, 213 and it's, which is an alpha emitter, it will emit an alpha particle, which I've already written there, and then it's going to be, well, 213 minus 4 is 209. Why? Oh, why is this not biting? 209. 209 because 209 plus 4 equals 213, which is what we had originally. On the bottom, I know I should get 86 because 86 plus the already 2 that we have in the alpha particle is 88, which is what we had originally. Remember the principle of conservation of nucleons. So once we have these two, we look at that 86, which is what defines the element, and we look at the periodic table. When we look at the periodic table, we find that element 86 is radon. And so we've made an atom of radon 209. Okay? It's very straightforward. This is uh, the same for all type of particles. Now, if we have a beta decay, that is the emission of an electron. And so, in this particular case, when we emit beta, we're going to be subtracting uh, a neutron and making a proton. So the mass number does not change. A on the top does not change because um, the zero that we have for the electron, or my cursor went away, okay, here it is. Uh, zero, so it would remain the same. But because this is a negative one, the atomic number for your new element Z has to be one greater, so it adds up to Z. Let's look at the example. If we have an atom of neptunium-236 and it emits a beta particle on the top, we have to have 236 because 236 plus 0 equals 236, which is the original number that we had. Similarly, on the bottom, we have 93, but negative 1 plus x must equal to 93, so it must be 94. 94 minus 1 equals to 93, which is the original number that we had. So we're going to put a 93 here, sorry, a 94 here. When we looked at it in the periodic table, we get that that is an atom of plutonium, all right, which is also radioactive. But notice then that the sum of the a's and the sums of the z's on the products must equal to the sum of the A's or the sum of the Z's in the reactants. They must equal the same number. That's the key. Okay. Um, now we're going to look at gamma emissions. Gamma emission 
is the emission of gamma rays by the nucleus of an atom. And because gamma rays are just pure energy, it does not cause the transmutation of the element. It does not change the nucleus. It only releases excess energy, and it normally accompanies alpha, beta uh, decays, um, neutron emissions, and electron capture. So it itself does not change the atom. Okay? So let's look. Uh, if we look, we can see that indeed because it's zero at the top and zero at the bottom, we just get the same element. The only big difference that we would see in our example here with uh, berkelium-247, which uh, can emit significant amounts of gamma radiation, is that 247, uh, ber berkelium, would have lower energy. So this uh, little red asterisk that we have put in here actually just denotes high energy. And so our product will have slightly lower energy because it has emitted a beta particle. All right? Ah, sorry, it has emitted a gamma ray. Uh, my mistake. All right, so gamma rays will just lower the energy that is stored in the nucleus. And so if we were to look at the previous reactions that we've seen, we can see how we would just write gamma rays to represent the amount of energy that actually is being given off by um, the reaction, okay? Um, independently, gamma rays do not change uh, the nature of the nucleus. The next is going to be uh, neutron emissions. Neutron emissions are, of course, when an atom releases or shoots out neutrons from its uh, uh, nucleus. And although it does not change the element because uh, the element uh, depends solely on the number of protons, it does change the structure of uh, the nucleus and therefore is a type of nuclear transmutation. It does not change transmutation of change of elements, but it does change the isotope. All right? And so we have uh, an example here. If we have krypton-87, which is a neutron emitter, we are going to shoot out a neutron, and we're going to be left with something that looks like this. It's going to be 86 at the top, because 86 plus 1 equals 87, which is what we had originally for our mass number. And at the bottom, we're going to have 36, because 36 plus 0 equals 36, which, again, is what we had. And since we know that krypton is element 36, we don't have to even look at the periodic table. We can just fill that out directly. All right? This is an example of the atom becoming more stable by losing neutrons. Finally, last but not least, is electron capture. Electron capture is when an atom is so reactive, its nucleus is just so unstable, that it will attract an electron from the first energy level into the nucleus and make a nuclear transformation of a proton into a neutron, all right? A quark would change inside of the proton and become a neutron. And so that's the big key to notice here, all right, is to see that we are actually going to have a, um, where the position of that electron is going to be, is the electron is going to be in the starting materials, all right? As opposed to being one of the products, it's actually there because you are capturing, so it's going to be necessary at the beginning, all right? And so how do we get the results? The results is that it's not going to change the mass number because the mass of an electron is close to zero, but it is going to change the atomic number. It's going to destroy or change the nature of one of the protons into a neutron, and therefore we're going to go down in our um, number of protons, in our atomic number by one. Okay, so in the case of lead 203, which can do electron capture, all right, at the top we would see 203 still, because 203 equals, 203 plus zero equals 203. And in the bottom, uh, we'd see that it would be 81, because 81, 82 minus 1 equals 81. And so that's what we have to put. When we go into the periodic table and find what 81 is, we find that that's element thallium, all right? 
and that's it. So now I uh, invite you to do some of the problems that you have there um, in the worksheet and uh, hopefully this will help you understand nuclear reactions better. Thank you.